Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna go download the Powerball winning numbers. I'm gonna show you how to prepare them in Microsoft Excel, and then we'll load them into SQL Server. Hope you enjoy this video. Let's download the data. Load up your favorite browser and then type in data.gov. In the middle, you'll notice a search bar and what we want is Powerball winning numbers. See the search button? Go ahead and click that. Once the results come, notice we get 27 data sets. See this first button labeled CSV? Click that to download a comma delimited file. This will be saved on my local computer in YouTube SQL Powerball, and the name of the file will be called Lottery Powerball Winning Numbers Beginning 2010 CSV. Just press the Save button, and we're all done. So the file has been downloaded. I renamed mine to have a shorter name. And then this is the way the data looks initially. You can right click here in the corner. Well, not right click, just click this in the corner and then double click here and expands all the columns. Notice uh, this is not sorted the way I want to. And so what we do is like select the first three columns, then go to where it says sort and then say custom sort. And then what we want to do is we want to sort by the draw date, this first column. And then we want the newest to the oldest. Make sure that my data has header is selected and then say OK. OK, so the data has been sorted. Let's make sure before we do a lot of work that this is the numbers that we wanted for the correct game. So I went in to uh, powerball.net numbers. Let's make sure that we have the correct numbers. 28, 45, 53, 28, 45, 53. The Powerball number is 20. OK, that's good. And then how about one more check? How about for the 2nd of November, 2-11-22, 2-11-22. The Powerball was 23, Powerball 23. So data.gov gave us good data, and now we're ready to proceed. Let's look at this data. So the first column is a date and that's a month, day, year, and then the winning numbers, it looks like there's a space in between each number, and then this multiplier, um, hmm, that, over here on powerball.net, they're calling that the power play. So notice here is 3x, and then the next one is 2x, so I guess power play. You know what, I'm not gonna use this, I'm just gonna be using the uh, date and the numbers. Let's go ahead and get rid of this column. So just hit the delete button when you select that. Okay, cool. Now what we have to do is we have to write a small VBA script to come in there and parse these numbers out of this string and we'll make individual columns for each one of these numbers. Right now our file is a CSV. We have to change this to a macro file. So we're going to change this extension to XLSM, M for macro. Let's do that. So hit File, Save As, and then Browse. And we're back to where we saved it as. And notice this Saved As type. Notice it says Excel Macro Enable Workbook. And then we're just going to keep our same name. And then we're just going to hit the Save button. Hold down the Alt button and the F11 key at the same time, and the Microsoft Visual Basic Application app will pop up. As you can see, I'm currently working on several other projects, but make sure that you click on Powerball's winning, and then come and say Insert Module, and this is where we're gonna begin our programming. Now, I always begin all my programs with sub, main, and that's just because I'm an old C programmer, but you don't have to do this. You can call it whatever you want. We're actually gonna run these independently. Let's begin by saying dim ws, ws stands for worksheet, as worksheet. Now, over here, you see it says Powerball's winning. This is a worksheet. So then we're gonna say set ws, that variable, equals worksheets and then whatever name that you decide to use down here that's what you're going to put here i called it 
Powerballs underscore winning. Now, if you give it the wrong name, you're going to get a boo-boo right away. So make sure that maybe you come here and say rename and rename, get that value, and then come paste it in there. Now, notice my data begins on row two and goes all the way down. Uh, let's see, where is it going to stop? 1390. So how are we going to process this? Well, let's do some looping. And the first example I'll give you is a while loop. So we have to declare a variable and we say dim row as integer. And then let's put a little common in here. When we come back to this, we know what we did. So let's uh, loop over all the data. And then we're going to say uh, row equals two. I want to start on this row, right? I don't want to start up here. I want to start right there. And then I'm going to say while ws, that's what we defined right here, while ws.cells row comma one not equal to empty. So this is the row. I'm going to set it to two initially. And then this is the column, column one. And I'm just going to stay inside of a loop and do that. Now, for every while loop, there's a w end. Now, notice row is set to 2. And if I do not put like an incrementer inside of here, this is going to become a runaway process and it'll never stop. So we have to say row equals row plus 1. And that will do it for you. Now, the second way we could have done that is a for loop. And we can say for row equals 2, 2, 13, 90. And for every four, there's a next. So you say next row. And it automatically will increment the row variable between this range. Let us just use the while loop. Let's declare two more working variables. We have winning numbers, and then we have an array of strings called buckets. So let's go in here. Now, how are we going to use winning numbers? We're going to say winning numbers equals ws.cells. What's the row? Well, that's that variable called row. And then what is the column we're going to use? Well, we're going to use column two. So that takes this value and sticks it into this variable. Now, once we get that, we have to take this string. Notice that there's a space in between, and we're going to assign that to buckets. And all we say is buckets equals, we're going to use the function called split, and then we're going to use the winning numbers, and we're going to use a separator called this space. And notice uh, double quotes in a single space, and it will take this winning numbers variable and then drop all of them individually into buckets. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a breakpoint on row, and let's just run this so we can see. Now I'm going to say add to watch buckets, and you can see here that 28 45, 53, 56. So you can see how I took a string, I used that split command, that split function, and then we loaded up the variable of type string. It's an array of strings. Perfect. Now that I have buckets individually, what I'd like to do is, you know, come over here and put 40, I mean 28 here, then 45, 53. I think you get it. Now how are we going to do that? Well, that's kind of simple as well. So we're going to say for j equals 0 to 5, next j. And then ws.cells. Now, where's the row? Well, the row is that same variable row. Row. And then how do we get it to 4 and then keep going over? Well, we're going to use 4 plus the variable j. And so the first one, 28, will go in 4 because 4 plus 0 would be 4, right? So... Now that equals buckets sub j, all right? And uh, I'll tell you what, let's uh, put a breakpoint here and let's run this and let's see the way it works. So notice 28, 45, 53. You see that going across, right? And I can just keep building lines and you see that working all the way down. And then I can turn off that debug on that row equals row plus one, hit it, and then when we're done, we get our message. So. Here is all our data. As you can see here, I gave columns 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 column headings. So this will be called N1, N2, all the way over to the Powerball button. Now let's uh, parse this date 
and put it into individual buckets as well. I just added three more labels to each of our columns, day, month, and year. And then what we'll do here is, so ws.cells row comma 11, notice 11 will be the day. I will come over here and I will say equals the day of ws.cells row comma one. Now what's row comma one? Well, I've got to come all the way over here and notice that is the date. So WS cells row comma one gets us that date. I'm going to run it through a function called day and I'm just going to get out five. Now I can copy this down and we, we can go to uh, 12 and 13 and we can say month here and then year. And that kind of makes that easy. And let's go ahead and rerun this and we're done. And then you can see that we have also broke down day, month, year. And guess what team? We have taken something we downloaded from data.gov. We ran it through a small routine over here called main. And now I have some data that I can almost push into SQL Server. Well, it's now time to take this Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, remember this data where we took the numbers, it looked like a string, we parsed it out into individual fields, then we took the date, and then we also broke that into individual elements. Now we're going to take it over to a file that we can load into SQL Server with Bulk Loader. Now here we have a date, and notice I removed all the separators, you know, like the dashes and the slashes. So it's year, month, day. And then I broke them down into individual elements. And then you can see your five numbers and your Powerball number. So in this last part of the video, we are going to be writing a routine that takes this data from this spreadsheet, this worksheet, Powerballs underscore winning, and build a file that can be used in the bulk loader. Let's do this. As you can see here, I created a subroutine called build file. And just like the first routine main, I have the worksheet and I assign it to the sheet in the Excel file. Then I declared a bunch of my variables and now we're going to open up an output file. So I said open. This is the output folder and file name, lottery.csv. Whenever you do an open, make sure you do a close. And this is to file handle number one. So you know this spreadsheet looks like individual cells. Like this one would be row comma four, row comma five and such. So inside of this routine right here, we're gonna be looking at WS cells I, now I is the row, and one is the column. So here you can see I'm assigning the date to D1. And then in columns 11, 12, 13, I'm putting month, day, year and then the numbers, one through five, and then the Powerball number. Now here's the magic line, this print number one. I'm printing the year. Then I'm calling the write function on concatenating zero, zero, and whatever M is, and then only taking the write two characters. And then I did the same thing on day, and then notice we're on M, D, Y. These are individual columns that will go into the table. And then our numbers, N1 through N5, and then the Powerball number. Now that output looks like this. It is a simple date, the date broken down, and the numbers. Then this file will be loaded into SQL Server. As you see, build file is quite easy. But if you don't know this one rule about, you know, the way dates have to go in, this could be a long day. And there you have it. Let us begin with creating a table called Powerball. Notice we have the use date, month, day, year, the five numbers, the Powerball number. Notice there are one date and the rest of them are integers. Let's go ahead and create that. That was successful. Now we are going to do a bulk insert. So bulk insert here is the name of our table we just created. From is the file that we just created in from Microsoft Excel. Then we're going to say with. Now we're going to use code page raw. The format is CSV. My first row is one. I have no column headers in this file. My field terminator is the comma. And the row terminator is the new line. So with this, we can execute this and it will take this file and populate this table we just created. Let's do that. And notice that took less than one second. Now we can actually go and say select star from that and see that table. And notice 
we have all of the data, 1,300 and some odd rows, right? Excellent. And there you have it, team. We downloaded the winning numbers for the Powerball. We prepared it in Microsoft Excel. We wrote some killer routines. Hopefully you learned a few things in there. And then we used bulk insert to load it into SQL Server. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. We'll see you back in my next video. Until then, take care.